Hello everyone, today we talk about the Notitia Omnium Dignitatum et Administrationum Tam Civilium Quam Militarium. A late imperial document received through an archetype of the Carolingian period, 9th century, in a subsequent later 15th century code, the so-called Codex Spirensis from Speyer, subsequently dismembered and now lost, right, and uh, this document being considered um, today almost unanimously an official one, right, uh, listing all the civil and military positions of the two partes of the Roman Empire with the relative hierarchical and geographical areas of competence. Um, in the military field, the notizia is an invaluable source of information. In addition to providing a photograph of the hierarchical structure of the Roman army, it shows its entire territorial location, nominally listing all the regular units broken down by command, and in the case of border units, also the place of deployment, although the identification of ancient toponyms in, uh, say, in the context of modern geography is not always easy. Uh, the lists of units apparently comply with seniority and hierarchy uh, criteria, allowing information to be obtained also in relation to these areas. And the interpretation of the notizia, however, is far from being complete and definitive. Various aspects concerning it are still debated. For this reason, also in consideration of the enormous breadth of the issues that such a document goes to touch, um, any attempt to describe it must be considered physiologically affected by a non-negligible degree of approximation and hypothesis. Uh, we made a video about the Notizia Dignitatum as far as the iconographical uh, compart is concerned. Uh, you can go check that we made a, you know, it's just a music video with the, the picture of all the units passing by. It's interesting, but we also made a video on the early Roman Imperial shield patterns that illustrate the difficulties in absence of a similar um, document uh, to the Notizia. This is really exceptional, you know, it's gone kind, historically speaking. The in reconstructing, in fact, things like the, the various emblems, the colors, etc., there are naturally, uh, for even for the late Roman Empire, not just the, the Notizia as, a, as an important uh, source of that type. Uh, at the end of the video, we will discuss specifically the the iconographical problems that we have with it because of the you know manuscript tradition and you know that the, there are actually um, I think the the iconography is is um, you know it's obviously mediated but it, it's substantially correct. I mean there are certain things shown there that actually look the way uh, plausibly at least. Right, I'm not saying it's how it actually was, but we should be aware naturally in this sense of the philological problem. Um, but um, it, it's one of those documents that you really need to, to, to take a serious look at. But they still have a dramatic importance. So today, fundamentally, this cast, say, but starting from the nature of it through the various, the general dating uh, of, of, the various, of the two parts of, of, of the empire, administratively split, split um, that uh, present substantial differences in the uh, redaction of, of this of this work. So, uh, although the Notizia Dignitatum is now generally considered an official document, extended by specifically by the Primicerius Notariorum Occidentis, mm -hmm. so it actually stamped from the Western half, uh, and um, the question does not enjoy unanimous agreement. In fact. A document that is conceptually similar for each half of the empire is already attested, right, pertaining to the primiceri notariorum of the two partes, so the two halves combined, called the laterculum, which in addition to listing the offices was also nominative, indicating, that is, indicating the names of the, the of who held uh, the office at the time of the compilation. Also anomalous is the fact that the Notizia is a unitary document in which, however, the uh, administrative, legal, call it, it was not ever formal in that sense, division of the empire in its two parts is recognized. Um, it, so an, an empire still united as it was before the death of Theodosius, uh, even if de facto you can argue, you know, divided into this, this 
not just two errors, but multiple ones just by historical legacy would have generated, however, uh, as a as a as a wall, a unitary notizia in all senses. That is, without the internal divisions into partes. Well, the empire divided, let's say, the Jure after the death of Theodosius, should have generated two physically separated documents. This is at least what is being proposed. I have problems with this interpretation as well, but chiefly because of the uh, relative uh, impact that the, the this nominal split actually might have might have had in the um, in the necessity of simply writing of creating this document. Also, and we will speak of the, of the purpose of this later, a bit later. So. Um, a document like the one in our possession would, however, therefore be justifiable uh, in its hypothetical officiality only if commissioned by someone who aimed at the de facto supervision over the whole empire while still recognizing the division into the two partes. For this reason, many of the um, analyses aimed at interpreting and dating the notizia that recognize its official nature tend to link it to the figure who best embodied such circumstance, and that would be Stilicho. We will talk about this hypothesis later. So, uh, these considerations and anomalies have generated parallel studies that mm, specifically question the function of the notizia as an official document. One hypothesis is that the notizia di Nitatum does not come from the imperial administration, but it is the result of the work of a private, uh, private individual. Right, uh, probably in the 30s of the 5th century, who um, somehow came into possession, ha possession of our official documents that definitely existed with varying degrees of updating, and he would have then um, assembled them without, however, being able to judge uh, correctly at least their chronological non uniformity. An intermediate solution between an official and a private document um, was also proposed. In fact, a refined code such as the Notizia could have been a gift with didactic purposes, right, as well as symbolic of close union between the two parties of the empire offered by Theodosius II to the very young Western Emperor Valentinian III, probably in 429 uh, 30, years in which generally, uh, which generally constitute the upper limit of the dates proposed for the Western section of the Notizia. Right, the the later of the two. Um, this is important because the document might have circulated also in different forms. Maybe it even had a sort of public function. There were like big posters, um, pulled here and there. It, the symbolism, yeah, uh, we're saying all of the units, you know, iconography may have been tricky, but the idea is is that you know such visual effects. We talked about it recently. Uh, actually for the time of Justinian, but it's not that it was accessible different in previous times, especially at this date, um, might have actually might have been aimed to, to, to show so this broader um, let's say idea of the unit of the unity of the complexion of, of the empire as a perpetua sanctio with the deployment of all the various military units in, in a moment in which the political military connection was uh, assuming taking on a, a more monarchic Meaning, and uh, therefore the, the importance of the unity was stressed. Um, uh, might have been a, an exercise, a place where you know people learn to read in in a sense. So we have, or some, and altogether, as you understand, a propagandistic work at the same time. So speaking of the dating that we have hinted at, so the dating of the document is neither uniform, as the sections relating to the two parts present different chronological developments, nor unitary, in the sense that each section has a stratified structure based on initial draft and subsequent updates and corrections they are very clear and and the notizia dignitatum was probably written on the basis of a focused interest in the parts occidentes or at least so it is deduced from the fact that, that some elements in um, the section relating to the parts orientes are simplified and rendered in a concise form. Furthermore, the updates in the western section continue well beyond those relating to the eastern section. So, the notizia shows the administrative division of the empire in January 395, 
following the death of Theodosius. As a whole, it is therefore to be considered in the updated state in which it is received after that date. Um, dating the specific sections, Eastern and Western. So as far as the military sphere is concerned, the Eastern section of the Notizia is based on the five chapters, that is audience 5 to 9. Uh, there are structurally similar concerning the five magistri militum of the relative mobile armies. This section has a significant peculiarity, that is that no element in it requires a dating back to 395 in the sense that nothing is clearly attributable to known events that occurred after that year. This suggests that the Notizia in Partibus Orientis was updated for the last time around 395 or later but based uh, still on information not significantly um, you know, dating uh, after to the years around 395. So this conclusion uh, is also supported by the presence in it of some anomalies clearly originated from provisional situations thus um, generated recently from the point of view of the writers of the document and all plausibly referable to specific episodes that occurred in the years immediately preceding 395 generally linked to the campaign of Theodosius against the usurper uh, Eugenius. Right? In, in any case, there is a binding term that constitutes the limit beyond which the Oriental Notizia certainly cannot be updated. Uh, 413, as it does not have a charge um, like um, the Comes Pontice, that um, the Codex Theodosianus instead attests precisely in 413. Speaking um, of the Western section, the, the core of it, of the section of the document, is made up of the two chapters relating to the Magister Peditum Presentalis. This is um, the, the, the chapter fifth, and to the, the Magister Equitum Presentalis, chapter sixth, uh, where the relevant units are listed together. Um, all the, the Western mobile units, according to a centralization of power in the hands of the two magistri presentales, which is not um, detectable in the East, like in the West instead, and by a chapter on the so-called distributio numerorum. This is in the seventh uh, chapter, where the same units are listed according to a different criterion, that is, by effective geographical distribution in the various Western mobile that is, field armies, the either presentales or provincial. The latter, however, are under the operational command of comites and magister equitum per gallias and would have received the latest contemporary update before 408, when the office of magister equitum per gallias was apparently abolished and the related chapter transformed into uh, distributio numerorum, after which only this um, uh, last chapter would be um, updated gradually, right? The last time during the, the 20s of the 5th century, when the aforementioned office of the Magister Equitum per Gallias was reactivated. Uh, consider at this time, the basically goal was invaded, I mean, the, the Rhine frontier was broken through, and so that's where, administratively speaking, the mess might have actually occurred. There were a lot of switching also in the civilian administration of the, uh, the, the actual prefecture of Gaul, so a big deal, and that could explain the thing. And we'll see it better later when speaking of the Rhine frontier. So the chapter on the uh, the, this, the, the distributio would, uh, of, of the of the numeri, right? Would therefore, but this, so these various units would be um, that there would be more split, right? So as if there were actually the remnants of those previous uh, armies would therefore be um, more updated, let's say in this way, than those relating to the magistri, which would explain the inconsistencies found. The other point is a uniform dating around uh, 420, 425, perhaps 423, that is the year of Honorius' death, for the three chapters. This is being proposed by Jones as an um, hypothesis, which mm, would have um, 
however been edited for different purposes right it could be twilight a hierarchy among the units in the case of the relative chapters uh, to the magistrate and provide information on the real consistency of the various mobile armies present in the field in the chapter on the distribuzio the different priorities in the respective ways of updating the chapters deriving, uh, deriving from this difference of purpose would explain at least in part the inconsistencies and contradictions between the different lists in any case despite the variety of theories there seems to be a good agreement in including within the years uh, between 420 and, uh, and 30 the latest update applied to the western section of the notizia as a wall the theories on the dating of the two sections of the notizia are much more numerous than those mentioned and often are completely based on a detail not taken into consideration by other analysts or on cross-referencing with other sources made according to subjective and therefore not uniform views. In general, the breadth of fields of, um, of vari variability hypothesized by the various analysts uh, is um, in any case limited to few years. Right? It does not differ significantly from the above date, which is already, you know, a, a, a a good thing. So speaking of Stilicho's hypothesis, right, this hypothesis is actually still in development as far as I know, but uh, actually I haven't checked out the, the most updated literature at this point from like um, some 10, you know, 10, 10, 15 years. So on the basis of the dates thus hypothesized both for the sections of the Notizia, various theories relating to the actual genesis of the document have been advanced. So According to Mann's uh, hypothesis, a first version of the Notizia, written by Theodosius, Primicerius Notariorum, uh, the Primicerius Notariorum of Theodosius, hmm, and perhaps relating to the entire empire, would have arrived in the West as part of the campaign against Eugenius, then proceeding to Milan, where the emperor died in 395. So, you know what the thing was, is that he actually invaded the West with a they had been usurped with, with it from from the east with an eastern army, and uh, eventually he he reunified for for a short time the empire. Then he died, and splitting it administratively between his two sons. Famously enough, so with the consequent division of the empire in in to the two partes, mm -hmm. the primicerius would therefore remain um, thus only for the pars occidentis right where it was located and would receive the task of drafting a new notizia right relating to the west alone and the western section of the original version would therefore have formed bases for this new document undergoing periodic updates over the following years during the regency of stilico while the eastern section would have been archived mm -hmm. Because they didn't know to know it. Uh, they, it was already, let's say, controlled. Um, and the death of Arcadius, on the death of Arcadius 408, Stilicho himself, hoping to be able to extend his regency also to the east, would have requested the composition of a complete notizia, which also described the Pars Orientis. Right, so the only source available for uh, this purpose was the eastern section of the first version of the document that existed back in the day, the one brought from the east about 15 years earlier with Theodosius. However, it had not been updated anymore, nor, in, as we've seen, nor in that context of tension between the two partes that was taking place with the god, you know, trying to, you know, push them against one another, would it have been possible to obtain sufficient information to revise it significantly, especially as regards the military aspects? This now outdated section would therefore have simply been amended by eliminating the territorial areas no longer relevant to the East, adapted to the strategic priority needs of Stilico by summarizing the parts not considered fundamental, um, uh, for example, in the, in the civil field, while the military ones were left in full, 
and combined with the most recent and, and updated Western Notizia. From that moment, the Eastern section of the Notizia, being in any case part of a document pertaining to the Western court, would no longer be modifiable due to lack of information remaining, def in, you know, in fact, updated to the years around 395. So we've seen, um, with the sole exception of the provincial structure, um, uh, that was naturally also known uh, in, in, in the East, while the Western section would have undergone further updates until the time of Honorius' death. So speaking specifically of, you know, what we can't point out from the dislocation of the military forces, if we start uh, with the list, then we comment something about it um, concisely. So, the field army of the Magister Militum Intram Intra Italian, right? So, main Western field army, norm normally based in Italy. So, there are six vexillationes palatine. Comites Seniores, Equites Promoti Seniores, Equites Brachiati Seniores, Equites Cornuti Seniores, Comites Alani, Equites Constantes Valentinianenses Juniores, One Vexillatio Comitatensis, the Equites Mauri Feroces, Eight Legiones Palatine, Gioviani Seniores, Erculiani Seniores, Divitenses Seniores, Tungrecani Seniores, Pannoniciani Seniores, Mesiaci Seniores, Octavani, Tebei. Five Legiones Comitatenses, Maziari Juniores, Septimani Juniores, Regi, Germaniciani, Terzia Iulia Alpina, 21 Auxilia Palatina, Deris, Cornuti Seniores, Brachiati Seniores, Petulantes Seniores, Celte Seniores, Heruli Seniores, Batavi Seniores, Mattiaci Seniores, Iovi Seniores, Victores Seniores, Cornuti uh, Juniores, Leones Juniores, Exculcatores Seniores, Grati, Sabini, Felices Juniores, Atecotti Honoriani Juniores, Brisigavi Juniores, Mauri Honoriani Juniores, Galli Victores Grazianenses Juniores, Marco Manni. Two Pseudo Comitatenses, Legio Prima Iulia Alpina and Pontinenses. Then, the Field Army of the Magister Equitum Intra Gallias, the largest Western Regional Field Army station in Gaul. It had four vexillationes palatine, the Equites Batavi Seniores, Equites Cornuti Seniores, Equites Batavi, Batavi uh, Juniores, Equites Brachiati Juniores, eight vexillationes comitatenses, Equites Honoriani Seniores, Equites Honoriani Taifali Juniores, Equites Armigeri Seniores, Equites Octavo Dalmate, Equites Dalmate Passe eh, Renzia Censes, Equites Primi Galliciani, Gallicani, excuse me, Equites Mauri Alites, Equites Constantiaci Feroces, One Legio Palatina, that is the Lanceari Sabarienses, Nine Legiones Comitatenses, that is Armigeri Defensores Seniores, Lanceari Honoriani Gallicani, Menapi Seniores, Secundani Britones, Ursarienses, Presidienses, Germ Geminiacenses, Cortoriacenses, Onoriani Felices Gallicani. 15 Auxilia Palatina, Mattiace Juniores, Leones Seniores, Brachiati Juniores, Sali Seniores, Grazianenses Seniores, Bructeri Amsivari, Valentinianenses Juniores, Batavi Juniores, Atecotti Onoriani Seniores, Sagittari Nervi Gallicani, Iovi Juniores Gallicani, Mattiaci Juniores Gallicani, Atecotti Juniores Gallicani, Ascari Onoriani Seniores, and ten Pseudocomitatenses, Legio Prima Flavia Gallicana Constantia, Martenses Abrincateni, Defensores Seniores, Mauri Osismiaci, Legio Prima Flavia Martis, Superventores Juniores, Cornacenses, Legio Septimani Juniores, Romanenses. Then there is the field army of the Comes Tingitanie, regional field army station in modern Morocco essentially, 
So, three vexillationes comitatenses, di equites scutari seniores, equites sagittari seniores, equites carduini, two legiones comitatenses, secunda Flavia Constantiniana septimani juniores, two auxilia palatina, de mauri tonantes seniores, de mauri tonantes juniores, also de comes controlled one ala and six cortes of limitani. Hmm? And th there is the field army of the Comes Africe, that is the regional field army station in modern Tunisia and Algeria. There is 19 vexillationes comitatenses. Equites stablesiani italiciani. Equites scutari seniores. Equites stablesiani seniores. Equites marcomanni. Equites armigeri seniores. Equites sagittari clibanari. Equites parti sagittari seniores. Equites cetrati seniores, equites primo sagittari, equites secundo sagittari, equites terzio sagittari, equites quarto sagittari, equites parti sagittari juniores, equites cetrati juniores, equites promoti juniores, equites scutari juniores, equites onoriani juniores, equites secundi scutari juniores, equites armigeri juniores. And the Comes had no field army infantry, as you notice. Here, they're, they're all cavalry. But he controlled, however, 16 minor garrisons of Limitani, or, or of less than um, a cohort size. Um, then there is the field army of the Comes Britannia. This is a regional field army nominally, nominally stationed in Britain. However, um, it is far from certain it was actually stationed in Britain at the time. As many as possibly of all its units are duplicated elsewhere un under other commands, right? Um, there are two possible explanations of this. One is that Constantine III um, took the Comus force to the continent, and it was dispersed after defeat, uh, his defeat to other commands, but that the units concerned were earned marked to return. Uh, should be should Britain be regained? The second is that the following the mm, that following the patrician Constantius recovery of Gaul, plans were made to extend imperial authority to Britain, which at uh, that time was being governed and, uh, governed independently by a ramp of the old Roman administration, right? The Roman Britons and that forces were uh, earmarked for this, um, and um, it's a fascinating topic of speculation as to what the inhabitants' reaction would have been. This army included six vexillationes comitatenses, the equites catafractari juniores under, under the um, comes um, uh, litoris saxonici per, um, per Britannias, equites scutari aureliaci, also possible in Tinges or Africa. Th these are the kind of discrepancies that we'll also talk about later. So. The Equites Honoriani Seniores that are also in gold, the Equites Stablesiani that are also in Africa, the Equites um, Syria, one of the Equites Sagittari in Africa or Tinges, Equites Honoriani Taifali Juniores that are also in gold, then two Legiones Comitatenses, the Primani Juniores that are also in Africa as Prima Flavia Pacis, the Secundani Juniores also in gold as Secundani Britones, one Auxilium Palatinum, the Victores Juniores Britanniciani, that are also in Spain. Right Now, Britain was also defended by five Ale, one Cuneus, 16 Coortes, and one Numerus along Adrian's Wall under uh, the, the command of the Dux Britanniarum, three Vexillationes, one Legio, and ten Numeri, also under the command of the Dux, and two Vexillationes, one Legio, one Cohorts, three Numeri, and one smaller unit under the Comes Litoris Saxonici, per Britannias. And a, a number of fortresses also were, you know, uh, known to be occupied during the 4th century, which do not appear, however, in the Notizia. And therefore, it seems uh, that um, the, the, the Notizia might show perhaps, at least this is hypothesized by uh, you know, kind of the skeleton garrison of the Limitani left behind by Constantine III right? um, since there was surely someone out there left as a logistical base, train replacements also tax collection because at the end of the day that's also what the military presence was about in the provinces and this is 
um, partly confirmed by the presence of uh, on the continent of units with British titles or named at least after British fortresses which must be previously have been garrisoned there then there is the field army of the first Magister Militum Presentalis this is one of the two main eastern field armies where it was no normally stationed in Greece uh, in support of the Danube frontier this included five Vexillaciones Palatine the Equites Promoti Seniores, the Comites Clibanari, the Comites Sagittari Juniores, the Comites Taifali, the Equites Arcades, seven Vexillaciones Comitatenses, the Equites Catafractari Biturigenses, Equites Armigeri Seniores Gallicani, the Equites Quinto Dalmate, the Equites Nono Dalmate, the Equites Primi Scutari, the Equites Promotis Juniores, the Equites Primi Clibanari Parti. Six Legiones Palatine, the Lanciari Seniores, the Gioviani Juniores, the Ercuriani Juniores, the Fortenses, the Nervi, the Maziari Juniores, eighteen Auxilia Palatine, the Batavi Seniores, the Baracchiati Juniores, the Sali, the Constantiniani, the Mattiaci Seniores, the Sagittari Seniores Gallicani, the Sagittari Juniores Gallicani, the Terzi Sagittari Valentis, Defensores, Retobari, Anglevari, Iberi, Bisi, Felices Honoriani Juniores, Victores, Primi Teodosiani, Terzi Teodosiani, and the Felices Teodosiani Isauri. Then there is the field army of the second Magister Militum Presentalis, the second of the two main eastern field armies, normally uh, stationed in Asia Minor. This included six Vexillaciones Palatine, the Comites Seniores, the Equites Brachiati Juniores, the Equites Batavi Juniores, the Comites Sagittari Armeni, the Equites Perse Clibanari, the Equites Teodosiaci Seniores, six Vexillaciones Comitatenses, the Equites Catafractari, the Equites Catafractari Ambien uh, Ambienenses, the Equites Sexto Dalmate, the Equites Secundi Scutari, the Equites Scutari, the Equites Secundi Clibanari Parti, Six Legiones Palatine, the Maziari Seniores, the Daci, the Site, uh, the Primani, the uh, Andecimani, the Lanciari Juniores, and sixteen Auxilia Palatina, the Regi, the Cornutes, the Tubantes, the Constantiniani, the Mattiaci Juniores, the Sagittari Seniores Orientales, the Sagittari Juniores Orientales, Sagittari Dominici, the Vindices, the Bucino Bantes, the Falcovari, the Terbingi, the Felices Teodosiani, the Felices Arcadiani Juniores, the Secundi Teodosiani, the Quarti Teodosiani, and one Pseudo Comitatensis, the Auxiliari Sagittari. Then there is the Field Army of the Magister Militum per Orientem, this is a regional field army normally stationed in Syria, with ten Vexillaciones Comitatensis, the Comites Catafractari Bucellari Juniores, the Equites Armigeri Seniores Orientales, Equites Tertio Dalmate, Equites Primi Scutari Orientales, Equites Secundani Stablesiani, Equites Terzi Stablesiani, Equites Promoti Clibanari, Equites Quarti Clibanari Parti, Equites Primi Sagittari, Cuneus Equitum Secondorum Clibanariorum Palminerorum, Nine Legiones Comitatenses, Quinta Macedonica, Martenses Seniores, Septima Gemina, Decima Gemina, Balistari Seniores, Prima Flavia Constantia, Secunda Flavia Constantia Tebeorum, Secunda Felix Valentis Tebeorum, Prima Flavia Teodosiana. Two Auxilia Palatina, Di Felices Arcadiani Seniores and Di Felices Honoriani Seniores, Ten Pseudo Comitatenses. Legio prima armeniaca, legio secunda armeniaca, fortenses auxiliari, funditores, legio prima italica, legio quarta italica, legio sexta partica, prima isaura sagittaria, balistari teodosiaci e trans tigritani. Then, there is a number of frontier garrisons that um, we can't list just in part because there are many, but... Uh, uh, let's say that um, they were stationed mostly, as you know, as limitane or repenses uh, on the um, on the frontiers, right? And the 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 Rhine, the Rhine frontiers, we'll see better now, had largely collapsed, so um, we can't reconstruct it probably. While the British and African frontier troops have been uh, read above uh, under the the relative um, 
military organization of the provinces. So uh, there was, uh, so these were scattered fundamentally. Uh, there were uh, single commanders, duchas, scattered along the frontier. Right, so there was the Dux Retze that had to defend the Upper Danube against German tribes. Um, his cavalry consisted of three vexillationes and three ale. Um, none of these were of the kind of famed um, Illyrian, let's say in brackets, type. Um, uh, the, the there were the Sagittari, the Clebanari, or Catafractari. There is no, no none none of these. So he had the Legio Tertia Italica split into five separate detachments. Six auxiliary cortes, uh, a river fleet, one detachment of milites, and one of gentes. Then the Dux Valeria, we will talk about it later, also defended the middle Danube, uh, namely the, um, uh, uh, the, the middle Danube bench against the, the Sarmatians. His cavalry consisted of 14 vexillationes and two cunei of Illyrian type, two vexillationes of Sagittari and one vexillation and two cunei of conventional type. He had the headquarters and five quarters of Legio Adutrix, the headquarters and five quarters of Legio Secunda Adutrix, five other detachments of Legio Secunda Adutrix, six quarters and five auxilium non-legionary infantry in a river fleet. The Dux Mesia Secunda defended part of the lower Danube against the Goths. Um, its cavalry consisted of three cunei of Illyrian and four cunei of conventional cavalry. He had uh, le the Legio Prima Italica and the Legio Undecima Claudia, both split in two, two parts in with uh, five quarters, each ten detachments described as milites and a river fleet. It was the Dux Mesopotamia, defended a relatively uh, flat area against the Sassanids, his cavalry consisted of five vexillationes of Illyrian cavalry, four vexillationes of Equites Sagittari Indigene, the, this basically local horse archers in the east, and three ale of conventional troops. Then the Legio Prima Partica and Legio uh, Secund uh, Secunda Partica each garrisoned a single important f um, fortress, right, and uh, the Dux Mesopotamia had two cohorts of auxiliary infantry as well. Then there was the Dux Armenia, defending a, a mainly mountainous frontier against the Sassanids, as you know, um, and his um, cavalry consisted of two vexillationes of Sagittari and eleven conventional ale. He also had the Legio Decima Quinta Apollinaris, the Legio Duodecima Fulminata, the Legio Prima Pontica, and ten cortes of auxiliary infantry, including three miliaria and one equitata. The Dux Arabia defended a desert frontier against the Arab ra raiders, and um, his cavalry consisted of six vexillationes of Illyrian, two of Sagittari indigene, and six of conventional ale. Right? And his infantry consisted instead of the Legio Tertia Cyrenaica, the Legio Quarta Marzia, and five auxiliary cohorts, including one miliari. The Dux Tebaidos defended Upper Egypt from the Blemi raids uh, and maintained international order. The Blemi state, eventually between you know, the Nile Valley and the and uh, this ridge separating Nile Valley and the, in the Red Sea, and also other troops, you know, peoples in the south. So, um, the Dux Tebaidos. Um, Cavalry consisted of two cunei and one vexillatio of Illyrian, three vexillationes of Sagittarian indigene, and one vexillatio and twelve ale of conventional troops, one ale of cataphractari, and three ale dromedariorum that uh, literally uh, you know, incorporate a small number of camels for desert patrol. Right. And the Dux Tabidus infantry instead included the Legio Tertia Diocletiana, split between three stations. The Legio Secunda Flavia Constantia, the Legio Secunda Traiana, the Legio Prima Valentiniana, the Legio Prima Maximiana, and the Legio Secunda Valentiniana at single stations, each in uh, ten quarters of auxiliary infantry and one unit of milites. So, mm, this is just a list, and the, the, there is an analysis essentially we can make on the base, not of the specific events, but other, um, you know, say, Comparisons we can make generally between the the, organiza the military organization of these various provinces, the dislocation of the military forces. So we can say that the dislocation of the Roman troops deduced from the Notizia cannot be dated with uniformity, as we were saying before. Where it would represent 
the eastern situation in the last years of the 4th century and the western one around the mid-20s of the 5th century at the turn of the transition between Honorius and Valentinian III, or in any case, according to the different hypotheses, in a period that extends at the end of that decade. Right, so it is interesting to note how for all the eastern commands and for the western commands not touched by the barbarian invasions of the early 5th century, the structures of the neighboring districts respond to rather repetitive pa patterns. Right, so in some eastern provinces we note the significant repetitiveness of some structures that still seem to reflect patterns of the late 3rd century, right, with garrisons made up of a couple of legions and integrated by units of equites and traditional auxiliary, you know, units, um, although there are different local peculiarities. In this sense, the uniform presence for, of the equites illiriciani and indigene that we have uh, uh, seen appears indicative, right, in the parts occidentis, at least in the Let's say in the westernmost part of it, let's say the, 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 the westernmost fort of the empire, um, is that less regular and repetitive structures are to be found, right? Um, they're still attributable, at least in part, to organizational typologies of late 3rd, early 4th century, but as we have seen, if you speak Britain or Morocco, these were, you know, you know pretty, uh, pretty detached areas, some of which the, the Romans had practically abandoned. Um, so the also, in this case, some uh, local peculiarities are evident, such as the conspicuous presence of the numeri in the British provinces alone. In the Danubian province, there is an apparent and gradual transition, which can be associated with the evolutions that took place along the 4th century between patterns still reminiscent of the late 3rd century and structures probably of Constantinian origin. In the latter, um, multiple legionary garrisons originating from the vexillationes that later evolved into legions coexist with typically late imperial units, such as the cunei, the auxiliares, literally, um, while the, mm, though, uh, let's say, uh, the, 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 the name of the equites and the ale gradually diminishes. And also, there is a deconstruction of the Rhine military districts, uh, as we were saying before, following the barbarian invasions of 106, the garrisons are heavily undersized. Uh, apparently provisionally reorganized, placed under the command of probably newly created figures, such as the Dux Tractus Armoricani, it was literally from the other side of Gaul, um, and the Dux Mogonsiacensis, however, that was uh, close to Mogonsiacum, to their minds, uh, and uh, made up largely of milites with titles that refer to legions um, that the, to which they, they, they could represent the remains, right? Perhaps destined to be restored, right? This is also just an hypothesis, but the defensive device on the Rhine was, however, heavily integrated in this phase by contingents of barbarian federati, which, of course, not being regular Roman troops, are not indicated in the notizie. Right, so other factor to take in consideration, and definitely very important distinction between the actual, you know, troop. That at this point, these people said it. Uh, here were not just small bands, uh, war bands. They were actually entire entire peoples that had migrated there. Right. So speaking of the African Limes, so the commands here are presumably based on local irregular troops, framed under the command of the Preponsity Limitum. Right, each responsible for a sector of the limes and subordinated to the respective dukes or commis. Unlike all the other, um, uh, let's say, frontier commands listed in the notizia, in, in these cases, regular units are not explicitly indi indicated. Right, apart from the two uh, ones of milites that are to be found to in available to the Dux Tripolitanie in Libya and this could imply their absence or their occasional and inconstant presence only the districts of the Dux Tingitane within the province of West Africa is part of, of the uh, the westernmost uh, fort right and then there were dislocations of border troops enclosed by the commands of the provincial duches and comites uh, and listed in the notizia as prepositure, 
of the Magister Peditum Presentalis, a figure on which they presumably depended directly. Only those of the province of Calleja are numerically significant. Maybe, I don't know, because northern Spain was kind of more uh, difficult to control, but still not explaining why this type is just there. Um, so, naturally, a lot more could be said about this specifically... Um, you know, administrative and strategical aspects of the deployment of the Roman armed forces. But first of all, and most importantly, we should ask ourselves, are we thinking through this straight? I mean, what's the re reliability of the Notizia, right? Well, as we've seen, the Notizia constitutes a document of inestimable value for the knowledge of late imperial administration and military organization. Like, hell, we are so lucky we have this thing, right? And thanks to all of those who passed it down to, during the Middle Ages, the copists that whoever rendered this this uh, information available um, to us. However, it is important to remember that it contains several inconsistencies, some of which are really also and still difficult to explain, frankly, which make uh, the notices use as a source. Um, you know, an extremely delicate source in the first place. That would be really handed carefully, right? The, the Western section, for example, is more extensive and detailed, as we have seen, but also richer in inaccuracies, while the Eastern section is more concise but also more coherent, probably because it is less subject to updates, right? And we don't know how it could even extend, actually, to, to the state of the two what the two helps were becoming from, from a military point of view, strategical point of view, and political point of view in general. And and in the first place, as already mentioned, the in the Western section, the lists pertaining to the two magistri and the one illustrating the distributio are not perfectly superimposable. Although, theoretically, having to list the same units, uh, yet internal, but with different cataloging criteria. So the distributio has uh, 20 units that are missing in the chapters of the magistri, while in the chapters of the magistri there are uh, 8 or 9, and depending on the interpretation, units absent in the distributio. The latter also has 7 repetitions inside, or units listed um, in two different mobile armies. Discrepancies of this kind can have various causes. Indeed, uh, updates that are not contemporary or um, or performed with different criteria, as already discussed, or performed only in the magister lists and not in the distributio, or vice versa. Transcription errors, too, resulting from the movement of units cancelled from the place of departure, not registered in the one of new assignment, in which case the unit disappears, or vice versa, units added to the new destination but not cancelled from that of departure, as we've seen from Britain, you know, the, you know which in the case the, the drive is duplicated. Other errors can be hidden in the updates of the provincial network as well. The note concerns the erroneous cancellation from the index of the notizia by an official, for example, uh, that maybe was very diligent in carrying out the order received but eventually not as careful, right, of the province uh, this is interesting, the, pro the, the Valeria province in Illyricum, right? While um, the, the effectively suppressed entity was the Valeria situated in Italy. So from the notizia there, there, there is a, a Dux Valeria in Illyricum that protects fundamentally an apparently non-existent province with a, with a mighty army, actually. And in addition to detectable errors as this as the cause of paradoxes or contradiction contradictions it is possible that there are as many undetectable errors because they do not affect the consistency of the document as well right while they could undermine its completeness or correctness of course same time naturally the possibility of transcription should not be forgotten when copying the manuscripts uh, that have been brought um, you know, a document from the 5th century to the present. So, we we have medieval sources about this. Of course, not, not the originals. Finally, 
it should be remembered that some sections are completely missing. Having literally been lost, such as the uh, chapters relating to the Dux Libiarum um, in the East and the one relating to the Dux Germania Prima in the West, whose existence is known, but uh, not to the extent of the respective military forces, so that we know that 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 the the officer existed, the district too, but we do not know together what what units were stationed here. Um, as you understand, these are particular interpretative problems. And passing to the iconography, that is also what is kind of more catchy about this, in a sense. Um, so, as we're saying, we, as we have showed in, in the previous video, the notizia is integrated by a rich iconographic apparatus, which also provides us um, with useful indications of geographical nature, because literally, and you can see it even in the picture inserted here, like you have the, the virus force scattered in the province, and they, they, that gives you more or less an idea of where, you know, the, the maybe certain uh, certain settlements we don't didn't even know they, they existed at the time are located compared to one another. So we can approximately um, say, okay, well, that that was the how they were, you know, scattered. And so each chapter relating to a dux or comes limites opens with this schematic representation of the fortresses occupied by the Equites and the Legiones, while, for example, instead the uh, Ale and Coortes are neglected, for which the names are indicated uh, locations in the text of the document, as we were saying before. Um, the heraldry present on the shields, um, present on the shields of dozens of units of the Roman army, in particular those deployed in the mobile armies or in the field armies uh so the ones that naturally this 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 is kind of coherent i mean f with the interest towards them uh well the the the, the one of the, in the boundaries in the frontiers maybe not so much because they were less important units tendentially um is also graphically represented there is of course no way to establish with certainty the originality of these elements Right, which are sometimes relegated by analysts up to the point of pure inventions of medieval copists. But as as I was saying at the beginning of the video, I, I actually do not think it's the case because there is something. Of, I mean, if you speak of colors or how even the you know the symbols were actually rendered, yes, I give you that, and you can see that's a medieval thing. Uh, the the from even the way it was drawn, it, yes, it's not completely realistic. It's not just a pure copy of the thing. Um, there are evident uh, influences from contemporary art and uh, you know iconography and so on uh, at some levels. But if, if you look at the substance of it, well, yeah, objectively they look pretty, uh, pretty, com pretty plausible in my opinion, pretty convincing. The problem, though, is that aside from this copy, we we have no um, this this specific uh, manuscript. We do not have um, a term of of comparison. Right, so when we talk about the, the notizia di Nitatum, it, it's cool that we have this this patterns, but at the same time, you wonder, but were they actually the ones that existed at the time? Like think about all the reenactors that create this thing at the, you know, at the best they can, and uh, yeah, but maybe they they would have not used that in th that way, and probably even just looking at the, um, uh, you know, the iconography of the notizia is perhaps. Uh, you know, uh, you know the, the shield symbols are sometimes they're complex and they're kind of um, let's say uh, the, the, there is a, an elaboration in, in their symbols. But at the same time, I, I suspect that the from what we know also from archaeological finds on that uh, the shields and stuff like you know insignia and so on were somewhat more complex and also naturally less standardized. And then we think that is not to say you couldn't literally see the you know loss of troops like, literally having on the shields those patterns and so on, but the question is once again, but do we have another term of reference for for that? It's very difficult to tell, right? We do not know. We we are extremely lucky to have this, but we should also be very careful, given that we have it, to understand for what we know that from the same source that these things might have been altered in some way. Um, 
Also, even if these patterns were original, the emblems are, um, you know, subject to further ambiguities. Like, first of all, the duplications, omissions, slips of the lists and inconsistencies, I mean, shifting of lists uh, that have led to an almost general acceptance of the fact that original or not, uh, most likely the individual emblems have largely lost their original relationship with the respective units as well. Right? This is just document was realized for, as we've seen, purposes that went beyond sometimes. It's not that the iconographic aspect was not important, the visual aspect was not important. The problem is that uh, this is not, uh, you know, a soldier actually representing his own unit for the sake of, okay, I have to show what it is. Uh, this is just a, a summary in a way. So, um, it, great caution is, is therefore necessary. Uh, both in generally accepting the validity of the iconographic support and evaluating the fidelity of a specific representation in its actual correspondence with the unit to which it is associated in the document. Uh, surely all these units had uh, a more complex system of, of uh, identification, subunits, and um, just, you know, chronologically speaking, things changed, right? Even if the, maybe the, the unit had this basic old sometimes you've seen it you know seeing here there, there are uh, legions that uh, were the, the original one of the early uh, imperial times um, the board the names the, the, the legacy you can imagine the pride and the the, the, the the religious value attached to the military symbol and so on so that there was a, a deep thing right and there are symbols that are uh, even for the you know the auxilia for example that are were foreign um, that really match the idea of what, you know, know those Germanic uh, comitatus bands actually uh, could use in um, think about all the various um, valves that appear. You actually find them in North Africa, but I mean, th there was a common symbol there that makes it plausible uh, in their nature. That, that's our, our, why I believe it's actually more accurate than may seem. It's just, it, in terms of symbolism, but uh, I perfectly agree with the fact that, that um, the, the the ways these troops had we seen them now, uh, at the time uh, would have looked very differently in terms of ensigns and types and you know colors and and so on, right? Uh, and in a much more variegated way. Um, in the notizia, there are also considerable inconsistencies between the lists of units relating to the various mobile armies. That's uh, kind of another thing now, but we can't even stop it here. But um, I hope that th this video was useful as far as, especially the, you know, the complexity of the, let's say, the interpretation of how this this thing came to to exist in the first place and passed down to us and what we can actually draw in terms of historical reality from it, which is how we should all obviously always mm, pose ourselves in front of sources, not just of such an ancient time, but literally understanding the complex complexity that always lies behind this thing. Because it's very easy to transform it in kind of a working mystic, categorical thing, say, okay, well, you know, Titsa Dinitatum said that those units were, you know, that unit was like, yeah, but, you know, what, what, what the reality was, uh, that we, we cannot know for sure, and um, it, it's, uh, you know, we know enough about the late Roman army, we'll keep talking about it, and, uh, and other armies as were at the time, to to know how more, actually way cooler the thing was, right, just even in terms of symbolism and so on, in fact, there, there could be interesting things said, even just about the art that we find, not just uh, I mean, the difference from, I don't know, from the early or late empire, not just through the notizia, but through other archaeological, uh, iconographical units. But uh, maybe we'll do it another time, because there's also objectively complex things. They involve history of religion, history of art, of course, um, and we should look at them more closely, maybe on some other occasion. But you can spot, definitely, um, you know, in that video in which we listed all the, the symbols here, we, we actually inserted a consistent amount, I mean, a very few compared to the, to the total, but you can already see that there are symbols that are, e that, that video was dumb, right, I didn't speak, it was just music, and, but you can easily see what the general symbolism, and confronting it with contemporary art of the time, what was about. Right, and we we see it from so many other sources that at that point should be very carefully analyzed as 
it's been done. Um, the, the major myth, of course, is the uniformity, the standardization of pre-industrial armies. Right, we think the Romans were, I mean, m many people at least believed, uh, like to believe, because they have a reason to believe that the Roman army was a kind of a, properly a modern or secular thing, but it was a completely different frame from that one, right? And th there is no diminishing in saying it, on, you know, on the contrary, knowing all what we know about it, but specifically, um, it's the we, what we should understand is the relation with the army, with the politics, with the society, with the culture of the time which is way more interesting, and also the same military experience tells us regarding even certain troops here that as auxilia were same troops that the Romans fought against uh, with, not just alongside with, right, so and we know it from the source, I mean they were still very important um, and it would remain symbolisms, deeply deep religious meanings, to the, thing. the Romans shared this very exact same um, and that is, as you know, if you have followed Schwerpunkt from quite uh, from some time, that how crucial, in my opinion, that that is to understand really those words. Much more than saying, you know, the, you know, to to paste and copy that pattern and say, okay, well, that's the uh, the 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 Honoriani Taifali Juniors, and it you know just the wolf, the blue wolf with the you know black, with a white background, the 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 red uh, around in the middle, yeah, with the globe. Yeah, but what does that mean, right? And how do you expect that to have been actually represented on, on sword, uh, shields and sword? Well, what about the hierarchies? What about the hierarchies? Have you ever thought about that? Because these are units that surely had a hierarchy within uh, and that they uh, share different symbols. And, and, and myth. But w once again, we have, as modern people, that now maybe we're reacquiring certain aspects of all that, but it's going to be very slow because we're still leaving of this dramatically... Um, s aseptic, sterilized concepts coming from encyclopedical categorism. I don't even know to say that from the Enlightenment, from positivism, for which everything is technic, it's progress. No, it's it's most of that is is ideas, is 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 how these people leave the, the thing, and, and especially when you have to go to battle and kill and get killed. A rationale goes to. You know, to go <laughs> at least there is a, a very important uh, the command maybe hopefully not, but the the trooper has to function with with means that are also drawn from from a background that doesn't much have a rational explanation, but it's with just deep, you know, feeling culture, you know, psychology, and, and and that is what matters a lot, and we have removed as moderns, and that we should reacquire at least in in our knowledge. Of course, it's not that we should go back to that time, you know, God forbid. But um, um, yeah, we we must understand, we must learn what what these people were about for for what they were, not for what we wish them to be. So, which is something that is disgustingly done every day. That is to say, you know, I want to know that I want to picture this because it's my thing. No, it's not yours something that has deeply to do with you much more than you think but that you cannot treat like that because that means raping its memory you have to be you have to be historically scientifically accurate to understand these things and we know enough today to make an analysis an accurate analysis at some levels at least it's never been done before right so i hope that these way with this video just some hints certain uh you know perspective uh can offer maybe a um you know the, the in fact a give consideration to, to such issues but we'll talk about them on another occasion for now i stop it here and i just hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please share it otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming content and for now i thank you heartily for listening to me i wish you a nice time and see you next time bye